Negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. No, no, ma'am. This is not a good idea. Sorry, Goose. But it's time to buzz the tower. All right, I'm here with uh, Gonky, who you may know from the Stand Against Evil Spectre series, who's a uh, character in the book. I've flown with him for a long time, um, most notably VFA 204 and now at the uh, T-38 Squadron. Former Hornet guy like myself flying the uh, T-38s, and today we're going to talk about how Gonky became a fighter pilot, because you may remember Gonky asked me how I became a fighter pilot. <laughs> Dude, how did you even become a fighter pilot? Honor to be here. Yeah, thanks. And uh, so, let's get started. Uh, Gonky, welcome. Thanks, Mover. <laughs> good, good. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, so what I thought we'd do today is just kind of tell another person's story. Gonky obviously went through the Navy. Uh, you went through OCS, OTS? OCS. O OCS. So, tell me your background. How'd you get involved in flying? What, what was like the first time you went flying and how'd you get there? Uh, well, I always had an interest in flying because my dad was an aircraft mechanic, career aircraft mechanic. He worked on fighters in Vietnam and that's kind of where it, it spawned from. So I didn't, uh, I flew in college a little bit, so I went to a big uh, aviation college, University of North Dakota. Um, and that's where I, I learned how to fly. I got all my civilian ratings um, up to CFII. So that was my first did you teach? Were you a CFI yeah, instructor? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I taught while I was in school, and I taught um, a little bit out of out of college. So I did a little bit of civilian flying before uh, I got in the in the in the Navy. Okay. All right. So you graduated and then applied OCS. Yeah. So what happened was I always wanted to be a military pilot, but uh, kind of like you touched on in your your video, where you had health <laughs> health problems and whatnot. Yeah, I have yeah. I had health problems as well. <laughs> Uh, childhood asthma, psoriasis. Jeez, uh, I'm sure a whole bunch of other. Yeah, physical see, everybody's <laughs> got a story. It's it, you do not have to be an astronaut no. to be a fighter pilot in, no. the, in the Navy. Okay. No, and I was a straight D student in high school too, so I wasn't the you know I wasn't the academic model. How'd you do in college? I mean, uh, you obviously had to have decent grades to. Yeah, well, college is different because you know we uh, we had to pay for it. <laughs> Um, yeah. I didn't have, you know, I wasn't ROTC or any kind of scholarships or anything uh, because I wasn't that smart in high school. And uh, so I paid for college. Um, and so I d thought, well, I better really try. So yeah. Yeah. I finished with a 3-3, three, three, I think, 3-2. Nothing. I got a BS degree, a BS degree in every... General, general every, study. Every degree. form of, the, of what BS could be. So, <laughs> so what... Um, what kind of flying did you do before you joined the military? So you got your commercial, you got your CFI, and then yeah, what what kind of cool stuff did you do? Uh, so I did, uh, like you said, CFI double I for the school, which was part one forty one, and I did uh, part ninety one training as well, just at a local FBO, which is a uh, awesome time. Uh, the coolest flying I did civilian was I flew weather mod. So when you have 400 hours... God, here we go with the... <laughs> all right. I was the thunderstorm Before chaser. The conspiracy theorist. Oh, yeah. Here we go. It's the, I was a cloud seeder. Yeah. There he, it is. He, he, proof. There it is. Them trails are real. That's right. Yeah. Gonky's, gonky's proof of that. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I flew twin Cessnas, and we flew into thunderstorms in uh, San Antonio area. I forget. There was like 15 or 20 counties we were supporting. For, to, to create thunderstorms uh <laughs> for rain enhancement <laughs> yeah okay. so we couldn't create a thunderstorm we couldn't st we get calls all the time from the farmers uh you know calling our little radar shack hey you stole my rain well that's impossible sir <laughs> um for you know to nerd out about it uh basically we would burn chemical release chemical in the clouds that would simulate cloud condensation nuclei which it was just it gives the water molecules something to bond to and fall out as rain and they estimate i think 
I think in an entire rain season, we'd increase the waterfall by like a quarter inch or something. It, I mean, Illuminati confirmed. Yeah, yeah. so you've confirmed all uh, suspicions. And this will now go viral. <laughs> None of what you say after this means <laughs> anything. It. This is the part. But um, but we would actually have to mix the chemical, and um, there was a lot of crazy stuff in it. But nothing struck me as mind control. Yeah. Um, so it was for rain enhancement. So okay. Well, all right. Enough about that because I'm sure the comment section is now about to blow up. But from <laughs> there. Uh, how did you apply OCS? Uh, well, while I was in college, I almost got in the Marines. Uh, the Marines had a direct, uh, guaranteed uh, <clears throat> pilot slot. You talk about it in your previous videos yep. of, hey, the best deal is to join a reserve or yep. guard squadron because then you know what you're going to fly. So I didn't even realize that stuff existed. Like you mentioned, it's not well known. Um, but active duty, the Marines at the time, this is like late 90s, um, they were... Uh, guaranteeing flight slots. So I tried really hard to get in there. I couldn't pass the physical. Um, we had an Air Force ROTC program. I tried to join them. Couldn't pass the physical. Because uh, of the <clears throat> yeah. aforementioned, yeah. Yeah, they said, uh, yeah, you had health problems. So yeah, the Marines rejected me because I had childhood asthma. They're like, ooh, sorry. <laughs> now, was that for the NAMI, for the flight physical side, or is just enlistment in general they had a problem with it? Flight. Yeah. Flight physical. So wow. um, then I tried to join the Navy. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, the recruiter told me that they got their best pilots from Nuke Power School. So I started to go down that road, which wasn't true, obviously. And uh, I got a bad taste in my mouth, so to speak, from, uh, <laughs> <laughs> from, that, from that experience. And so I tried basically all of the flying branches. Uh, I don't know, not, not the Coast Guard. But um, then I decided, all right, I'll give this a break. And that's when I got all my civilian, finished all my civilian stuff. And then I didn't uh, re-pursue that until I was out of college flight instructing um, after uh, after September 11th, so after all the cloud seeding stuff as well. So you were a couple years removed from college at that point? Yeah, I graduated in three and a half years because I was motivated to get out of the cold. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, not because I'm smart, but yeah, so I took about a year and a half off, and then and then I reapplied. Uh, and I, you know, I always joke, but I, I really think there's some truth to you know After September 11th, I think they lowered the standard they needed people, um, and I got in. You know, I was very lucky, very, very, uh, very lucky. So, like, like you said earlier, I went uh, the OCS route. So I went to OCS after college, and with OCS, I could. They said, "What do you want to do in the Navy?" I said, "I want to fly." They said, "Cool, you want to be a backseater?" I said, "No," <laughs> and, I, and and they said, "Well, if you don't pass OCS, you're you know you're gonna go home." I said, "I don't care." So I knew going to OCS. I was going to be a pilot if I could pass. <laughs> yeah. I went to Pensacola, uh, passed OCS, which uh, was a fun 13 weeks. I think it was 13 weeks. Anyways, and went. It's hard to remember. That's right. It's so that's long so ago. Long ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went to uh, uh, flight school there in Pensacola. Uh, fantastic time, ground school. And they passed the chart around where we're all going to go for our first flying uh, training assignment. And, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and you know, me not knowing anything about anything, I, I, I see my name says Enid, Oklahoma. I'm like, we don't have any Navy bases in Enid. And that's when everybody around me is <laughs> Enid like- Enid by the sea. It's Enid, Enid by the sea, Enid yes. The sea. Enid is in Oklahoma. Yeah. And there's no sea. No, there's no sea. There's flat land. And, map. and there's a lot of Air Force there. So they sent me <clears> to, they would take a small amount of guys uh, and send them to Air Force training, and the Air Force would take some guys and send them to Navy training. It's just a, a little fun swap they would do. So I did the first part of my primary flying training uh, with the Air Force, um, which was quite an experience. It is not the same. It, it is. Not the, same. <laughs> um, the commander at the time for the best, like, it's like when, you, when I went from Vance Air Force, tra Air Force Base training back to Navy training at T 45 in Kingsville, it's like, Going from Catholic school to public school. <laughs> I mean, it was like a religious experience. So, well, which one's which? Uh, the Air Force is Catholic school. Yeah, a little bit stricter. Yeah, yeah totally. There's, there's no stand up in, in the Navy. There's pros and cons, though. I knew basically when I was going to be done, and the training was excellent. I mean, it was very, very difficult, but uh, but yeah, I went and I got to fly a T 37. I got to, you know, see how another branch operates. Uh, and then I was lucky enough to uh, to get good enough grades to get uh, get a jet slot. So at the time, they were really hard to get. Uh, I really didn't think I would get one because 
uh, the Navy grading, I don't know how it is now, it may be streamlined, but the Navy grading system was totally different from the Air Force. So they had this Einstein oh, yeah. uh, calculator. They would push your grades through to, to convert them. And by all accounts, uh, I thought I didn't have uh, jet grades, but what I did and, and it happened to me. And it was, uh, yeah, then I, I moved down to Kingsville for, for jet training, which was, which was really awesome. All right, so after Kingsville, uh, you got jet grades. What was it like to land on the carrier for the first time? <laughs> uh, That's where you do it, right? Kingsville. Yeah, yeah, Kingsville, yeah. So Navy training is a little different. <clears throat> um, you know, the, the way they set it up is you do, uh, T-45 is the first time you get exposure to the carrier. And you go through the entire program, and then they send you there. Or you could most likely wash out, right? Oh, good. But right. So you've already made it this far. Pretty much. And now it's all. Pretty much. You're done with air to ground, the whole elementary okay. dog so, fighting thing. So we talked about IFF. Yeah. So you're basically, for the Air Force version, introduction of fighter fundamentals. You're doing this after you've already kind of you are done, done some tactical stuff. Okay. Yeah. So you are like, yeah, exactly. So compare the Air Force, it's like finishing T 38s. Finish an IFF right before you go to B course, uh, whatever, yeah. wow. in the Air Force. They send you to the ship. And the reason why they do that is from day one, like every landing is like painfully graded and evaluated. And I mean, it's like. Rightfully so. Rightfully so, because <laughs> they send you through the whole program because you get that many looks at the ball uh, and ball flying, if you will, um, before going to the book. Because they want to give you the best chance possible because you go solo. Yeah. With the, you know, the idea yeah, there's no IP in the No. Right? You're <laughs> flying, the first time you do a carrier landing is alone and unafraid. Or alone yeah. and very afraid. Yeah, in fact, the first time I ever saw a carrier, I took off by myself from Navy North Island. Holy crap. Flew out, I don't know, 50 miles off the coast, dialed an attack in, which happened to be the ship. <laughs> Met my lead who was overhead. They have a, a lead <clears throat> safe overhead. I joined up on him and then he kind of brought us in. Lead safe is an instructor. Yes. Right. It's yes. an instructor that's kind of hanging out over with another aircraft. Yeah, he had uh, a couple of students on his wing. He's basically there to kind of shepherd us because the way the Navy does the training is it's, it's very basic CQ. It's literally just enough to get you around an aircraft carrier hopefully land on it and take off on it. Uh, it's almost like just learning how to do pattern work yeah. in like a T-38. So there's there's case one, case two, case three, cyclic ops, a whole bunch of other stuff that you learn later. But in Kingsville and even in the RAG or the B course, in yeah. the Hornet, it's very... Basic. Yeah, dude, land without dying, yeah. take off without flying in the water. Yeah. Okay, so after that, you got your assignment to fly Hornets. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> kind of touching on the boat thing. In the Navy, you know, nowadays everybody, if you're going to the carrier uh, in any kind of jet, it's gonna be a Hornet flavor. So back when I went, you know, it was Prowler, S3, um, Super Hornet, and uh, Charlie model. And the Prowler is really hard to land on the ship. So depending on, like if you're a great ball flyer and a mediocre fighter pilot, <laughs> you may go to the Prowler. And that's kind of, you know, I was... So wait, to be a mediocre fighter pilot, that means, that means the IFF part? Yes. That you didn't do so well in? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did... Not you, I'm not... I'm in right. general, the, yes. the, the royal you. Yeah, yeah. Because the Prowler, man, <laughs> I mean, you know, turbojet engines, no burner, big, heavy, ugly thing, you know, like... Uh, uh, it was just harder to land on the ship, you know. And we had a guy in the squadron that yeah, he was actually when he went to the Hornet. Yep, he was the best yeah. at landing yes. the Hornet on the boat when we did our CQ. Day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Those guys, uh, because you know, it's it's just more difficult. And so you know, where I fell out was I was okay. You know, I was average uh, for the fighter pilot stuff, and I actually did a little bit above average for uh, for the carrier stuff. And so all the LSOs, who are the landing signal officers, are the, they're the guys that they're kind of like your coaches to keep you from hitting the back of the ship and keep you safe, and they grade you too. Frowned upon. <laughs> Very frowned <laughs> upon. Um, you know, they were all joking with me. Hey, man, we think about prowlers. I did not want to go prowlers, no. but yeah. No. So uh, too, too many people. Too many people in, in the uh, in one airplane. And that's right. So I uh, 
I got done with CQ, went back, and um, I got uh, F-18 Cs out of out of Kingsville, which was awesome because I knew I'd be the only operator in my flying machine. Oh, from Kingsville, that's what you got. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So from Kingsville, from Kingsville, you, uh, once you graduate there, you get your wings. So in the Air Force, you get your wings, then you go to IFF. That's correct. Yeah. So in the Navy you kind of do IFF and then get your wings. So you get your wings right before you go to the, your, your B course, or we called it the Now they give you West Coast, East Coast at that point? Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> there, was, there was like, uh, it, was, it was split down the middle. Everybody that wanted East Coast got West Coast. Everybody that wanted West Coast <laughs> got East Coast. <laughs> and, and, uh, Needs of the, Air, the Navy. Yeah. Needs of the Navy. It's something, yeah. if, if this, you're watching this and you want to be a fighter pilot, just learn the You don't matter. <laughs> needs of the government because yeah. you are just a number. Yeah, but I was so excited. I was, you know, 20-something. I, I could have sent me to the North <clears throat> Coast. You know, I wouldn't have cared. Yeah, so you went <clears throat> to Lemoore. Yes. For, which is a wonderful place another non uh ocean sign <laughs> <laughs> similar to enid <laughs> yeah yes uh and how was that flying the hornet for the first time uh it's pretty you know for me it's a kick in the brain because you know being a flight instructor and you know if uh, any of you guys have flying experience out there i'll tell you firsthand you know i was a cfi double i the military flight training i until you do it, you just can't understand it. But the learning curve is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I had an advantage maybe the first week <laughs> of of flying. Right, the basic. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, uh, in my little Cessna 172, I'm not flying departures at 250 knots. Or I'm not doing high altitude penetrations. But, you know, there, uh, there's just, it's, a, it's on a whole new level. So uh, and I actually had to break a lot of my old habits. Um, so when I flew the T-45, it was the A model, all steam gauges. And so I, when I went to the Hornet, that thing was all glass. Yeah, well, um, granted. Atari glass. Atari, yeah, so, granted. Yeah, it's, not, it's 1980s glass. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, not like triple a, seven. A Garmin 1000 no. or anything. There's no. No. No, it's not color MFDs or anything like that. In fact, guys going to it now are probably like, this ain't glass. <laughs> so, but, uh, thumbs down. Thumbs you just, down. You're going to have in the comment section, I know there's no glass in this. There's, there's two colors, green and black. And black. Yeah. 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 Well, the newer ones are better, aren't they? The yeah, Super the Super Hornet has color. But, um, the you know, I started on A, B, C's, and D's, and I mean the old ones, um, and they were... They were glass. They had data sub levels and all this stuff. So I've been flying, you know, airplanes up until this point. And this is your first fly by wire. Yes, fly, fly by, by wire. wire. Yeah. So um, and this is your first, uh, you know, like if it's your first weapon. You're really kind of getting exposed to, and it has data sub levels. And that's a good point. You know, when you get to same the F-16 is the same way. I mean, when you say when you get to the aircraft, it's no longer about the flying. That's it's, right. It's about the uh, employing as a weapon. I mean, it's a weapon, weapon platform. system. It's yeah. a weapon system. So, and that's why they call it MWS, major weapon system. A major weapon system? I don't know. I think so. Yeah, that's I don't right. know. I mean, but the whole point is, like you said, it's, you know, you're using this machine to get to a release the, point. The flying part is easy. And, and that's, that's, you know, in, in the Navy, what they call admin. Yes. In the Air Force, we call it the motherhood. Yes. Takeoff and landing is just something you brief by exception. I mean, right? I mean, That's right. You, you, in the Navy, it's the same way. It's it, Unless something happens, you're not really talking about it because right. our job is to go out and take this $40 million aircraft and kill people and break their things. Yes. I mean, or, you know, it, yes. whatever our nation's interests, you know, might be. So it's not about the flying. The flying's easy. Yeah. I mean, the actual <laughs> oh, yeah. stick and rudder. Yeah. I mean, especially now, you know, we're flying T-38As, which we'll get to in a second, <laughs> which is a very hard <laughs> airplane, right. you know, stick and rudder wise, you know, it's a very, you know, mental, you know, yeah. brain power consuming versus a Hornet, which you oh, know, yeah. it trims for 1G level flight. You know, you got an autopilot, uh, you got radios, everything's ho task, you know, oh, which yeah. is hands-on throttle and stuff. So let's go back to your story, uh, not to, you know, get off track too much, but uh, <laughs> oh, <that's fine. laughs> um, Lamore, yep. they gave you, do they give you an assignment from there? It was like they ranked no. you, did they stop ranking you at that point? Oh no, is it still, the grading never stops. Not grading, but I mean, are you rack and stack against your peers? Because yes. like you go to an yes. Air Force B course, 
you know, how you're doing relative to everyone else kind of determines yes. where you, you know, you get first choice of assignment, which, you know, in the F-16 would be, you know, hey, I want to go, you know, first assignment, yep. maybe Spangdalem or something like that, you know, really yep. nice place versus, you know, something less desirable, which aren't really many less desirables anymore. They've right. kind of narrowed it down, but. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it's the same in the Navy. So, uh, you know, when you first show up to Lemoore, it's like, you know, the, the, in the Navy, there's two called them master jet bases, uh, Virginia, uh, Oceana, and then uh, West Coast is Lemoore. And then, of course, they have uh, Japan. So uh, in, the, in, the, in the hierarchy, if you will, the guys that get the highest grades, your best dudes typically, and they, they weigh your boat grades very yeah. heavily in this, but typically those guys will go to um, Japan. Wow. And then it's kind of a free-for-all for the stateside uh, places, so... I did not go to Japan. No. <laughs> so. no, no. Not that there's anything wrong no, with that. Not no. That there's, uh... They probably didn't need any guys. So I showed up to Lemoore, um, and it was, the Hornet was very difficult for me because um, I was a steam gauge guy. Uh, we had some T-45 guys who were flying the C model, which well, was... What do you mean steam gauge guys for the... Uh, folks at home. I'm talking like round dials, <clears throat> so yeah. no glass, no digital. Yeah. Um, and at the no t- HUD, right? No, no, uh, HUD, no HUD. No, no. Uh, and all that's gone now. Um, but back then, guys were split. Some guys would go the C model T45. Some guys would go the A model. I went the A model. So it really kicked my butt when I got to the Hornet because I didn't understand. I didn't understand how to operate a glass cockpit airplane. Um, and the, the this the step up, I'm sure you can attest between the, even the T38 and the F16. It's it's it is a massive step up in and just system management. Well, actually, the C model. But still, yeah, I, I mean s- the C model to the F16. But again, it's the weapon system. That's stuff. right. You know, it's not. It's less about the flying. The That's flying right. part's easy. It's just what. We used to call it the piccolo drill, right? You know, you know, team is four, dauber left, all you know, to get all the. We finger... called it finger fire, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> you know, I mean, the, the, we, I don't know what's a hornet is, but we solo in like six rides. Oh yeah, 15. it's it's very quick. Oh yeah, that's the easy part. Yes, you know, it's not the, it's not the weapon. BFM, you know, takes more rides yeah. than it does yeah. to learn how to fly the airplane. Dog yeah, the basic fighter. So members. I mean, you touch on a good point. So basically, all your call them gray jets so all your combat airplanes they have to be easy to fly yeah um and the f-18 you know it has plenty of power it has plenty of drag so you can speed up slow down as much as you want like you said fly by wire um yeah i mean it, it's <clears> stuff <throat> so you can like take your hands yes. off the, the thing <clears throat> yes. you'll look at your you know your in-flight map study yep. whatever you're doing set it's... the autopilot set the climb it would even you don't uh, to take off literally you set the trim you point it and you shove an afterburner it, you do not rotate the that's at least... true if you're in takeoff trim it'll it'll yeah. right off a, the runway a through d model you do not rotate <laughs> it it ta- and to land it you know you just put the velocity vector where you want to land you don't flare you oh, just i did I know I did too, just because just it was challenging. But but you don't flare; you just fly it in the runway. I mean, it is the probably the easiest jet I've ever. Flown yeah, F eighteen is the easiest airplane I think I've ever flown. I don't think they can make it any easier. But it's made it great. I mean, that's what yeah. was so awesome about it. It's very easy. You know, it's yeah. not it's not a difficult jet. So no. going back to you know Lemoore, you got West Coast. I did. You were stationed at Lemoore after yep. that, so everything was kind of you didn't move. You just stayed there. And, yeah, so the way Navy works is you're part of a squadron. The squadron's part of an air wing, and the air wing compromises all of the airplanes and helicopters that will go on a specific carrier, and they call it a CAG, right, carrier group. Um, I, my uh, squadron was assigned to CAG-9 at the time, which was assigned to the John C. Stennis. The Stennis was based in Washington, so even though we were flying out of Lemoore, when we would do exercises with the Stennis, we just meet it out over the Pacific. Um, so, and being in Lemoore, a lot of the ranges that we trained at were up in uh, Nevada. Oh, at Fallon? Fallon, Nevada, wow. and then down in uh, El Centro. So, you know, you have your home base, but you do a lot of training. It's kind of like in the Air Force, I think you guys go to Nellis quite a bit. And... Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> my experience for the Navy versus the Air Force, we do a lot more at home. 
Like, we didn't debt, you know, to go on a detachment, you know. Like, the, yeah. the Navy guys like to go, like, Key West, you know, on the yeah, East Coast do. and stuff. Yeah, we <laughs> I do. I don't disagree with that. But, you know, as far as doing exercises, I mean, we yeah. the majority of our Air Force training is, is base-centric. You know, right. air-to-ground ranges are right there. Air-to-air ranges are right there. That's correct. Red flag Nellis is more of a an exercise, large force employment exercise. So it's getting other squadrons and doing stuff. I mean, it's it was not to the extent the Navy does everything. Yeah, we like to go places. Yeah, they don't stay. <laughs> they don't stay home very much. No, and I sometimes I think that's just a function of budget and not having all the resources. You know, they, we share it. When I was in the Navy, we shared a lot of stuff. You know, like if you wanted your stapler Masks. on the ship, I shared a mask one time. That's right. It was the most miserable. It smelled like Vienna sausage. Yeah. Because I, it was a certain somebody. Was in it our my squadron. helmet? No, it wasn't your. Or helmet. my mask? No. Sorry. My my mask broke, and <laughs> so I call back and I'm like, hey, uh, you know, I'm in the jet, and I go, hey, uh, can you send me a mask? And they run a the mask out. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, me Air Force guy thinking, no, it's brand new. It's right mm. out of the thing. I'm like, well, why does it smell like Vienna sausage? Yeah, well, new carriers are expensive. Yeah, well, so, apparently. I mean, they got, yeah, thanks for nothing. <laughs> they got a budget somewhere. All right. Hope you enjoyed part one of the interview with Gonky. Uh, it's a lot of fun to sit down and talk with him. He's a great guy. Uh, stay tuned, and next week we'll talk about the rest of his career from going uh, Hornets at Lemoor, deploying, coming back as an instructor, and then how he ended up in Malaysia and uh, in the Air Force Reserve flying T-38. So uh, if you're looking for a book to read, please, uh, Alex Shepard series is a great uh, terrorism thriller with a law enforcement twist. Or if you're looking for more aviation stuff, the Spectre series, uh, there's a box set, books one through four. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, also, you may have noticed Gonky's shirt, uh, Folds of Honor. Uh, it's a cause we all support. Uh, it, it's a, uh, one of the pilots in our squadron, Major Dan uh, Rooney, is the founder and he created a, uh, it's a, it's, they give scholarships to the children of uh, fallen veterans. So worthy cause, please consider uh, donating. Uh, if you haven't already, please uh, like and uh, subscribe and I'll see you next time.